It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, author and analyst, and Mr. Hardy Burt, author and correspondent. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Mr. J.K. Lasser, tax expert and author. Mr. Lasser, you've made a career out of showing Americans how to save money on income tax. And tonight, sir, uh, we'd like you to tell, uh, give our viewers some advice on how to do just that. First of all, sir, what group of Americans will pay the most income tax this year? What income group? Well, by far, most of our taxes will be paid by families and individuals with incomes under $5,000. Is that, that because there are so many of them? Is that, that would be the reason well, obviously. for that, yes. In other words, our, our government is supported by the little people, that is, the little income earners, and not by rich men. That's precisely and correct. And the, the people that have incomes of less than $5,000 pay many more billions of dollars than the rich men pay to support That's our right. government. Now, sir, uh, what are some of the ways by which the average American family can save money on income tax? Well, I think the question ought to be answered this way. Our experience is that too many people are either lazy or timid or ignorant of what the Congress has intended for them to have. Would you say that they are overpaying then on their taxes because uh, they don't know what exemptions are coming to them? A great many unquestionably are overpaying because of one of these three things that I have indicated. Yes, well, sir. now, the first, the first thing that an American can do to cut down on his tax then, I assume, is, is to keep records. Is, would you say that's the most important this thing? This is the most essential thing, that he have a good, clear record that he can show to a government examiner at the tail end of the year, indicating uh, his source of income and all of his deductions. What are the usual exemptions, Mr. Lasser, that the, the ordinary exemptions that people overlook? Uh, could you cite a few of them? Well, they come, uh, you use the word exemption. This is a deduction, an well, exemption of, of $600. We, we break up into two classes of deductions, really. One is called the exemption. You're entitled to $600 for each dependent. We find a good many people that do not understand the types of individuals that may be dependents. They assume that uh, a dependent is someone able to support himself. This is not the case. Our only rule is that a $600 exemption, a deduction of that kind, is allowed to you if uh, you pay more than half of the support of any one person closely related to you. And if that person has an income of $600, of less than $600. Well, Mr. Lasser, if I had a ninth cousin living with me uh, who was perfectly healthy and normal and, uh, but wouldn't go out and make a living and I had to support this ninth cousin, could I deduct this ninth cousin? Well, let me, cousin give, you, let me give you an example. Let me give you some illustrations of the type of people that are uh, too often not claimed because uh, it is not understood that you are entitled to deduct for them. I checked off here those that uh, are frequently om omitted. <coughs> they include adopted children, grandmothers, half-sisters, half-brothers, grandfathers, nephews, nieces, aunts, stepfathers, stepmothers. There's a long additional list that includes stepbrothers and stepsisters. Well, People frequently omit the uh, claim for them if they fit into that class. But they have to be a relative, though. That's right. Yes. And now the first point you're making is that many people are paying too much tax because they do not understand what an exemption is. That's right. And, uh, and, and that exemption, incidentally, they don't have to support him uh, all during the year. It can be for one no, day or a may, week. It may be a child born on December 31st. And so you have a full exemption for a child but one day if it's just in existence one, during the year. It's oh, the date it, that counts. That's right. And then the first way is to understand an exemption. The second way, as you pointed out, is to keep records. Now, in keeping records, does that mean 
More or less keeping a, a day-by-day -day diary? No, it means that you ought to have a record that will permit you to prove the things you are claiming on your tax return. Now, now sir, uh, what, what deductions do people miss that they should keep as a record and that they're missing now? They're under $5,000 in particular because they, as you say, are overpaying. Well, if they are overpaying, it's because they do not have records that will indicate these costs, medical expenses. You're entitled to some deductions for them. Most people just do not keep a record of those costs. They assume that the medical cost includes only the doctor and the dentist. They neglect the, the assembly of the costs for hearing aids, eyeglasses, uh, medicines, the drugstore bill, a vast number of other items that are detailed for you. This is one. A second class of uh, deductions not claimed uh, mostly because people fail to keep records are contributions. Too many assume that the only deduction secured is that for cash paid out to a church or to a charity. This is not true. We're entitled to deduct the fair value of anything we give to a church, a charity. That could be clothing or? It could be clothing, jewelry, a work of art, anything about the house. It, it might be uh, food given to a church. Another uh, form of expense not uh, something, maintained. Something that people commonly miss in the way of a deduction. What would it be? Uniform costs are very often not taken. Union dues is, an is a deduction often not taken. How about theater tickets? Theater tickets, entertainment would be a deduction only if your job required you to spend that money for them. In other words, if, if you were a movie critic, you could take it off if you went if to... If the job required the, the cost, then you might take that off as well as the normal costs of all other entertaining or all other traveling. Well, in there a federal tax on uh, motion pictures, for example, that you could, 20% that you could deduct from no, the federal No, no, not unless that? it all fitted in within the business costs that you had. Another frequently omitted uh, cost uh, concern or deduction concerns theft. Someone moving into your home and robbing you of your silverware, this gives you a, a deduction. Well, moving on from deductions, sir, <coughs> what group of Americans would you say that uh, have to pay the most tax? What group uh, do our tax, are, our t un are our tax laws most unfair to you, would you say? Oh, it most unfair or they uh, are heaviest upon the single people. We, uh, Both either a man or a woman, the, sing or the woman single person. Alone. Would you call it an unfair law because it's heavy on the single person? He doesn't have any dependence. I'm a married man. <laughs> 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 uh, you mean it pays to have a wife in this country? It certainly pays in this country to have a wife. Our laws uh, <coughs> give a con very considerable reduction to the married man. And a retired uncle or so around the house, I suppose. This can give you a $600 deduction uh, or is exemption. It, is it still possible in this country for a young man to start and get <laughs> rich? Oh, yes. You mean, is it possible under our tax system? Yes, under our tax laws. To yes, get, I have Are a great many Americans getting rich in spite of taxes? Yes. And getting rich perfectly, fairly, and honorably? Perfectly, fairly, and, and most of it, of course, arises because they make the right kind of investments, own the right kind of property, uh, conduct themselves uh, toward that well, end to get, Mr. Lesser, uh, someone in, uh, who's assumed to be a tax expert once told me that any man who earned $20,000 a year, if he took full legal rights of the law, claimed all of his exemptions, all of his deductions, could be perfectly honest and not pay any tax. Is that conceivable? He might own tax-exempt income. He might secure it in that way. I assume that that might be done, yes. Well, on this question, sir, a great many Americans are probably worried about it. Is it morally and legally and ethically correct for er every American citizen to pay as little tax as he must pay under the law? Oh, your government assumes that you will be as frugal with it as you are with your grocer. You are expected to pay just exactly what you owe and no more. Can you depend, can the average taxpayer depend on the government man to show him all of the necessary deductions? 
Uh, you mean when he visits a government yes, office? Yes, when he visits a government office to ask for Given advice. sufficient time, I'm sure they will help very considerably in making out returns. I, yes. wanted, I wanted you to ask you this question on that point. I'm glad Mr. Huey brought it up. Uh, there are many, many people, of course, who don't know how to make out their own income tax. It's very technical and very complicated. How do they know the tax consultant they're going to is a phony or not that's going to get them in trouble? Well, I'm sure if they got to a lawyer or to a certified public accountant, there would be no problem. And in addition, in their own communities, the reputation of uh, tax people ought to be known. If they cannot get to one of that group, they certainly today ought to go to a government office. They're very anxious to be of considerable help. Well, two quick questions, sir. We often think that we pay lots of taxes in America. Are we the most heavily taxed people on earth? I think that uh, in some classes of our people, we pay far less taxes. Today, for example, the married man in this country pays less tax than they, uh, is assessed in Canada. If I make a million dollars a year, how much tax do I pay? What is the rate? You get up into a 92% bracket very quickly. Well, sir, as a final, as a final question, is tax evasion a major problem in this country, or are we a people that generally pay our taxes? We, I think, are a law-abiding people and not tax evaders. No sense are we of the character we find in so many other countries. Well, I'm sure that our viewers appreciate this good free advice from you tonight, sir, and thank you for being with us. Thank you. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Hardy Burt. Our distinguished guest was Mr. J.K. Lasser, tax expert and author. A priceless attribute of every Longines watch is pride of possession. It brings the satisfaction of knowing that one owns the watch of highest prestige among the finest watches in all the world. Yes, a Longines watch brings its owner more than the delight of a beautiful possession, more than the unsurpassed timekeeping of a remarkable watch. For that Longines watch of yours is the one and only world's most honored watch. Only Longines, among the world's finest watches, has won so many honors for excellence, elegance, and accuracy at world's fairs and at the great government observatories, and in sport, aviation and science, and other fields of precise timing. Now for Easter, for an anniversary, for a birthday, for any important gift occasion, throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines. And yet, unbelievably, you may buy and own, or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as 7150. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. Broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Sundays, Ed Sullivan's Toast to the Town on the CBS Television Network.